I guess we'll do the pledge and move on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, this is the part of the meeting that we'll usually open up. To, uh, anybody's got anything they want to talk about that's not on the agenda, can't uh, act on it, but we'll take it under advisement. So, anybody got anything? Just one item. I, I wondered if you had made any success in getting the three trees that were marked down. Down where? Oh, out here? Yeah. Uh, I think Josh talking with him, he was he had talked to the city. The city was talking about cutting them down for us. Um, so I think it's all up to when he can get with uh, Harley and or Harley to Jason. And I guess that's not going to happen until after the Christmas lights are down there. Exactly. So. Well, I I thought about that and I thought, oh, surely they wouldn't even try to put them down where all those. No, it'll be after <laughs> it'll be after January probably. Okay, thank you. But uh, I had a uh, representative from Angel Tree contact me, wanting to use uh, the old church over here for the holidays to store the stuff they get, all the stuff they give away for Christmas. And I said all I can do is bring that up, but I said I feel certain they'll probably, if we even consider, we'll probably want to make sure there's some kind of liability insurance to your organization. Uh, so nobody's here for that. Just either. in case they're uh, they're 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 in there. I guess somebody gets hurt or why they're in there, but yeah, I don't. I think it's all right. I'm all right with it. Well, I am too. But do we want so, them to have insurance or not? That's what they want to clarify. Word of caution. I think there's maybe confidential. Stuff stored over there from the judge. Actually, last time, last time I was in there, there wasn't anything in there. Okay, good. Because maybe they've got it in the back area. Because I went and looked at the That's ceiling good. in there. There, no, there's. I don't think there's anything good. in there anymore. Good. There might, there's some filing out or not, but there's nothing no, like there used to be. Good, good. So, what are you thinking? Let them, not let them have insurance. I think as long as they supply the uh, some sort of insurance, or if we find out that we have insurance, I mean, I. I'm all for helping somebody store something, especially that type of stuff. Yeah, and I yeah. don't know. I'm sure our insurance would cover. Um, I think what I can do is just get them an application for county use, mm -hmm. and then just have them fill that out and attach a certificate of insurance. And just um, mm -hmm. I get, if you guys agree to that contingent upon that, then I can yeah. collect that stuff from them. That I'm fine. Well, there's one of them showed up right now. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she here? Just me. Oh, okay. Are you here for the angel tree? Mm -hmm. Okay, we were just discussing that, Jimmy. Uh, would you explain to her who your wife is and what she does with all this? Um, Want to come on up? You mind? We sit right here. Yeah. All right, Brandy, how are you? Good, how are you? How are you? Good. I'm Jim Pate. I'm uh, Michelle Bear's uh, fiance. We're getting her getting married. But, anyways, uh, she's been doing the angel tree for about 12, 14 years. I've been doing it off and on for three to four, but no, no, we're just finding them. We're just, yeah, <laughs> but we're, we just can't find a place to work out of. Ain't nobody wants to, to uh, help out. Uh, and this county is definitely in need of angel tree, you know. Yeah. We supply a lot of kids and a lot of elderly and disabled people with food baskets. So what kind of space do you need? Just something from where they can work out of, and it's mainly going to be eight or ten, mainly women. Usually, I might be in there or junior, but uh, like say, if we send some goes down to New Albany, you know, and if they don't get a lot, we got over stock that we got stored that we put in to make them up a decent size bag. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Extra clothes, toys. A bicycle, whatever. Okay. Now we got the bikes down at the fairgrounds. They're they're nice enough to let us keep them down there. They don't charge us nothing, of course. Yeah. We keep them there. We give them out there. And this would only be a spot for them to work out of to make the baskets up and to make the bags up 
for a month, you know what I'm you saying? You storage space, don't you? Yeah, the storage is mainly what it's for. And right. that and to bag it up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because they hand it out up there at the Ray Stolly building. So do you have any, and John brought this up a minute ago, do you have insurance? Like why do you get life insurance? Why well, I think See so another thing is, and I'm gonna do this after the first of the year because I'm tired of it being this way myself. Cause I like I said, I've been getting pretty involved with it too past three or four years. It's gonna change, we're gonna have a board and that way we can get the 501C because it all right now goes through the clearinghouse. Clearinghouse don't do a thing. Yeah. They go, they do their baskets. We'll probably do the same baskets as they do. People double dipping, you know, because we don't know because they won't work with us. Yeah. Um, See, we got a few checks there past couple years. Like the last year we was over here in this building besides Hardy's before that guy decided he wanted to do something different with it and get more rent out of it because we didn't pay for it. Yeah. We didn't have the means to pay rent. But, uh, because it's all volunteers. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, at, after, like I said, after the first year, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to get together, get bored, so we can get to 501C, so we don't have to go through them. Cause like I said, before we got rid of that building, a guy gave us over a thousand dollars in a check. Now, where's that check at today? Ain't nobody knows, cause we gave it to the partnership and it's gone, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just gone. Nobody can show us what happened to uh, it. So what's really coming down to is you guys need space, and, and uh, Michelle told me they'd like to use the church over here. Is that correct? Absolutely. And you don't have, you're not going to be able to provide any liability insurance, correct? No, but we can sign a waiver or whatever you all need. I, and I get that. We, we just, go ahead. I'm, you saying something, Mike? I, I'm not going to, if we have liability insurance on the building, I, I'm not, I'm not concerned. I, I'm, that's me talking. I'm, I'm not as I wouldn't turn you down because you don't have it, and I understand your situation. You're mm -hmm. totally a volunteer mm -hmm. thing, and ever you know nobody's making any money off this, mm -hmm. um, and all you need is a place. But I was getting ready to see if Josh could come up here because I need to. We need to know if, if we if the heat we can get the heat over there. Um, but uh, but uh, well, I think the electric's still on. Uh, I, I never. I didn't, yeah, I did. And I was thinking if, so if it didn't on, have so. electric, I could go out and maybe work up a few donations, you know. No, it's got electric. I'm pretty, <laughs> we, and it should have, I think it has the utility still on, so the furnace is probably on to, to the bare minimum, so. Mm -hmm. uh, just so things don't, don't freeze don't up in there. In the hall. Let me grab Barry. I just don't have a problem. I'm not going to say no because you don't have insurance, and I, we do have liability insurance on it. So if somebody gets well, like I said, if they come down to that, we can sign a waiver. Like I said, there'd only be about eight or ten of us in there if that. Yeah, I get that. And you I, say it's over since Christmas is over. Yeah, about two or three weeks. About third week in January, we'd be out there, John. Give us a few weeks to kind of catch our breath and so we take a six, break. We need about six weeks. Then. If that six. Well, whatever the date is, yeah, about six weeks. It'll be about six weeks. Josh is out this morning. Eric doesn't know what they have. I, I got the key to it, so I'll actually go over there after we get out of here today and check on it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, I, I wouldn't vote against it, whether it's the insurance or not. So if uh, what everybody wants to do here, I think mm -hmm. it's a good cause. Uh, matter of fact, on the way in here, I was thinking about, I was listening to the radio about another organization that, <clears throat> I, pro I usually give to and I may be changing my way I do things this year so um, so I guess well, I'll no, no, I'm good too I think I'll I'm entertain it no. okay uh, I yeah and I'm like you I don't know about your heat and all that kind of stuff so I don't, I don't know what we're gonna I'll do. go over there so I got the key in my car as soon as I get out of here I'll go there and check and make sure the heat comes on and I think the, I, the last time I was in there and it's probably been 30 days ago or so I walked in there to check the roof uh, to make sure uh, what kind of shape it was in. And it was a very comfortable roof. I mean, I'm yeah, sure it's, we've there. got a leak somewhere, but uh, but, but anyway. I'm, I'm with you. I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't know if it's everything you're going to need or not to go to the heat. All right, I'm going to make a motion to, to uh, what's that? 
uh, amend the agenda to include the uh, angel tree here so we can make a motion. So I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. To John makes a motion to, to uh, adjust the uh, agenda. Second. Randy seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. So now I'll entertain a motion to, to give them, uh, uh, I guess, for six weeks or the third week in January or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and there's a man to consider waivers, of course. So, yeah, I'll make that motion. John makes a motion. Second. Randy seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So, and you I'll said you would do some waivers. Can you give me your write your phone number down there, so I'll call you after a while and tell you okay. if I got it or if the electric. I think the electric's on, but I want to make sure that everything's good. And I hope you have a good year with it, Jimmy. Yeah, me too. Well, we went down there and picked about 150 bikes up. Girl. But of course, you know, and that's the thing you get into with this too, guys. I don't know whether you know that or not. And you know, these kids around here in Scott County can't judge who their parents are and what they're doing and what they have done. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're there to care. Uh, but you know, like I said, there's 150 bikes sitting out there at the fairgrounds when we're finally said and done, there might be still 30 of them bikes out there mm -hmm. because people won't come and pick them up. Mm -hmm. well, it's a shame, but it is what it is. And I can't deliver everything for everybody. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was running my gas out last year, well, taking food want. baskets to people that was very able of getting them to their set. You know, had vehicles uh, sitting in their driveways when I'm pulling up here. Ultimately, your goal is to help children that's there. right and you will do that absolutely here for how many years now huh you've done it for how many years now? i myself have did it for four this and will Michelle be my fourth done it for how many years 14. so the goal is to help the absolutely <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with us okay. so <laughs> is this the uh is this the ink to clarify this is the tree that they put at the at the walmart mm -hmm. you go in and take a tag and mm -hmm. you it's out there right now okay all right. Then there will be one over at the JC store too for like I've food seen, baskets. Yeah, I've seen that too. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll give you a call here before if, noon, probably. If we need the waiver sign up, so that our attorney can help us with that. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. You Thanks, walked at the right Thanks time. What you do. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Take care. Shell said I. <clears throat> um, anybody else? All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a short statement here before we start. Uh, it actually concerned the last meeting. Um, just quickly, um, I want to apologize to the commissioners, apologize to anybody that was in the room, and apologize to anybody that watched it and was upset about it, but um, I allowed uh, our last commissioners meeting to get out of hand, so um, I'm going to take uh, responsibility for that, and I'm going to let you know right now that uh, in the future um, if anyone um, wants to get into that kind of back and forth then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the meeting and uh, and uh, we're gonna either take a breather or we're gonna uh, ask someone to leave or whatever but uh, we're not gonna get into the back and forth like uh, like what happened at the last meeting so again I want to apologize on my my behalf for my uh, part of that. So, moving along, uh, public comment on the council redistricting. Anybody got any comments, interjections? I uh, I still don't. Make, I'm not for sure who it helps and hurts on this thing. I, <laughs> Jim here asked me about it and he got with Tammy and explained where the line was. Right, 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 right. So if anybody's wanting to run for office, I suppose they want to hook up with the clerk or the auditor. And yeah, it, I think that might be a little confusing for people right now exactly where the district lines are. So, well, I will say that um, talking with some people um, since our last meeting, um, it, it clears up a lot of stuff. Uh, before in the past, I think, and I and I'm not, I'm not going to beat on anybody. I think I think everybody did the best they could with what they had. But with with today's 
and we're talking about probably 20 years ago. Uh, but to, in today's computer world and GISs and people being able to map people and know where population is, it's a lot easier to say, hey, we're going to let's draw the line here, move this over here. And but it just never made any sense why somebody in North North Austin would be voting for a commissioner or count or not a commissioner, but a councilman that is from Lexington. And it it they don't rep. I mean, although everybody represents everybody i mean you, you know you're going to be calling a guy in lexington to, as you if you've got a problem with a, a council problem so i think uh, i think it's a it's it's straightened the lines up i think you know i don't think it's going to make a uh political move you know like a state would you know by moving a line but i i just don't think it's going to be that big of a deal maybe i'll be proven wrong later but and um I haven't had anybody call me. We put it out on the video the last time. Uh, one person said something to me about it. I haven't heard anybody complain or voice concerns. So uh, I think it's it's basically judged off of the census. The last census would give you parameters they have to go by. So I think uh, the clerk's office has done about as well as could possibly be done on this. And, there may be somebody get hurt a little bit on this, but I'm not sure who it is. Nobody wants to concern on it yet, so I'm good with it. I think we've made it better. Randy, you got any comments? Huh? No. Zach, do you have any comments <laughs> since you kind of worked on that? Yeah, I will just say that, um, you know, I want to thank the clerk's office for the work that they did and um, the GIS people for um, assisting with this. Um, and basically that I think at this point that based on, you know, the uh, facts that were provided to us that this is a, this is a, a must-do situation, uh, in, in my legal opinion. Uh, we must alter the, the, the county council districts uh, because uh, the ones that are currently in place are not uh, consistent with Indiana code uh, and also that um, that is only one piece of the work so part of it is county council districts the other is commissioner districts but the commissioner districts are, are not changing they will remain the same um, and this the opportunity for this only occurs once every 10 years um, and I think that if the county were to decide not to, which you can, uh, it's the commissioner's prerogative, but um, there's a substantial risk that uh, a citizen could file a lawsuit um, and that the county would have limited say so and in kind of suit, a successful suit um, in determining what the council districts look like in the future. Um, they would be redrawn by a court and uh, the county would be responsible for paying the uh, winner's attorney's fees. So to protect the county's uh, budget, it's not uh, to follow the statute that I think in my opinion it's... I think what you're saying is somebody can contest this more than they want to. They could contest the uh, the council districts as they currently stand today. Um, yes. I don't take. Yeah, but not. Are you saying contest this? No, he's they can't. No, I mean we can pass it, but they can contest well, it. Well, even though we anyone can contest anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think, think the likelihood of a successful challenge uh, is greater under the prior yeah. version. Than I think we're getting closer to this. I think we're getting closer to what the state is recommend recommendations are compared to what we were uh, percentage wise from I think, what I understand. I think so. All right. Well, this, this does not affect precincts. That's yeah. a different. So people will be voting in the same places. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, which precincts are in which district. Does this need to be read or can you just pass it? Um, well, if there was a motion to, I, I would I would probably ask that you do uh, a reading today, um, introduced. I'll read the first reading. 
Ordinance number 2021-2023. Ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of Scott County, Indiana establishment. The County Commissioners and the County Council Districts for the Scott County, Indiana, amending the Scott County Ordinance number. Uh, I don't know what that number was, but whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Scott County, Indiana are required and established of Scott County Commissioners Districts in 2021 pursuant to IC code 36-2-2-4 and whereas the Board of Commissioners of Scott County, Indiana are required to establish County Council Districts in 2021 pursuant to IC 36-2-3-4 and whereas the purpose of this ordinance is to establish the county commissioner and the county council election districts in Scott County, Indiana. Now where therefore be it resolved and ordained by the board of commissioners of Scott County, Indiana that the Scott County ordinance number 2021-2023 is amended in full and re replaced as follows. Section one, county, council, county commissioners, Scott County is divided into three county Board of Commissioner Election Districts designated numerically as follows. District 1, this district shall consist of the following precincts in Johnson 1 and the following precincts in Jennings Township 1, 2, 3, and 4. District 2, this district shall consist of the following precincts in Lexington Township 1, 2, and 3 and the following precincts in Vianna Township 1, 2, and 3. And District 3, the district shall consist of the following precincts in Finley Township 1 of the following precincts in Jennings Township 5 and of the following precincts in Vianna Township 4, 5, and 6. Section 2, the County Council. Scott County is divided into four County Council election districts designated numerically as follows. District 1 is district shall consist of the following precincts in Jennings Township 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. District 2, this district shall consist of the following precincts in Johnson 1 and the following precincts in Lexington, Lexington Township 1, 2, and 3. District 3, this district shall consist of the following precincts in Finley Township 1, of the following precincts in the fin or Vianna Township 1, 3, and 6. And District 4, this district shall consist of the following precincts in Vianna Township 2, 4, and 5. Section 3, all ordinance, including the Scott County Ordinance and or parts of the ordinance in conflict where here within are hereby repealed. Section 4, if any section, subsection, sentence, clause, phrase, portions of this ordinance shall or for any reason be held invalid or unconstitutional by any court competent jurisdiction, such portions shall be deemed a separate, distinct, and independent provision, and such holdings shall not affect the vitality of remaining portions thereunder. Section 5, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage by the Board of Commissioners of Scott County and completion of any other legal requirement in a manner provided by law and then uh, duly adopted by the Board of Commissioners of Scott County at the public meeting held on this 29th day of November 2021. So, anybody got any questions? Uh, is there just one reading that all needed? Um, unless there's a it, no it, vote? Unless it passes unanimously it needs uh, a reading at a second meeting. So. If it passes unanimously, it passes today. unanimously today. Okay. Um, and one thing I will say is there's some provisions in there that have to do with amending existing ordinances. Um, Tammy, I sent you an email with an updated copy that excludes those. There's a parentheses in the top. Mm -hmm. and um, correct because I don't know that we. I can print the good one off. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, There was a suggested kind of version, uh, but I don't believe that we. So, is there what is the d deadline? Deadline. Um, it's December thirty first yeah. is the uh, full on must be filed deadline. But there are some uh, notice requirements that has to be basically put in first. So, I think it's well, our our next meeting is the fifteenth, and this is where I'm getting at is because. Um, 
I uh, we talked about it at our last meeting, and, and this is where I'm going to say something that uh, it's not that I'm would vote against it or vote you know at all against it, but um, you know if if one of us would abstain, and I, and that could be me, I would abstain just to 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 give the public another couple of weeks to say, hey, I'm going to absorb this and whatever. As long as we are in that timeline of being able to meet the requirements by the state, I would, I would entertain a motion when we read the rest of this. But I would almost entertain a motion, and then I would abstain. It wouldn't be a no vote, but it would actually push it to the next meeting to where. Well, I, then, will, I will do the no vote. That's all right. Yeah, and I'm the same thing. I want the public to have two more yeah. weeks of. I, I get that, and and, and yeah, this is a big it. this is a big deal, and and uh, I don't want to I don't want anybody to think we in the in the you know dark of night change something that is going to affect the county, and yeah. and I want everybody to know what we're doing and be transparent as all get out. Well, so. the reason not when you say an abstain, I don't know if that's the same thing. It, or not. He just said well, abs so abstaining is a, not a no vote. It's no it's vote. that. Yeah. It's a it's a non vote, so you have to have everybody in in yeah. unanimous to, to pass it on the first read. So if we if instead of voting no, because that would be a negative, if you abstain, then it's a it's technically a no vote, but it's not a no vote. Well, I'll do whatever our attorney says. Do we need a no vote or an abstain vote to make a difference? Long what we're talking time. about is to push it to the next meeting so that we can give the public either will do. Okay. Either one will just do. okay. That's the fine. unanimous vote of the body is required, and that's the whole, I believe that's the way the statute's written. That's the whole body, so it, it had to be three. And whether it's no or not, or saying, right. we can all vote together the next time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, is there something in here that's different? I added the ordinance straw, and then what he took out was the reference to the I mean, prior ordinance. Staining would probably be, I guess, cleaner. Cleaner here. Okay. I, mean, I don't see. I don't know if there's a effective difference under the circumstances, but <clears throat> well, just for the record, uh, for the people out there that that are listening, what we're talking about is giving. No one's going to. I don't think at this point is going to vote no uh, on this ordinance, and I think everybody's in agreement on what the ordinance is saying what we're doing is giving the public an extra couple of weeks to be able to absorb it and to study it and to have any questions if they want to come to our next meeting and talk about it so i guess at this point i'll entertain a motion to accept the ordinance as read uh i'll make a motion to this thing. well uh I'll second the motion yeah i need to, i need a motion first I'll make a motion. Okay, so John's making a motion to, to uh, entertain the ordinance. Randy, you want to second that? Uh, this isn't the vote yet. Okay, yeah. This I'll, is. I'll second it. All right, I'll make that unanimous. So uh, the ordinance on the is on the table. So now I'll uh, ask everybody for their vote. So uh, I don't care who abstains. Uh, I guess all three of us could abstain. I guess you wanted to, but yeah. Well. It looks Actually, to me like no, somebody needs to needs pass it. on the first and second reading. So <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna vote. I'm gonna I'm gonna vote yay. Okay, and I'll I'll vote nay. Okay, I'm saying whatever you so you gotta vote. So this is a motion yeah. to you gotta vote. The Two of us have to vote yay. Oh, okay. Well, then what you ask? Because <laughs> I, I can't talk yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have uh, Randy and I voted. Randy and I voted yay, and John's going to vote no, or pretty much he's just abstaining. That's my, that's my job to vote no. Yeah, I get you. So uh, this is going to move on to our next meeting, and again, don't be uh, confused that we're voting against this. We're we're wanting to push it to the next meeting to give everybody an opportunity to to uh, have more information. So, all right, Good idea. Moving on to the next thing here. And if anybody does have questions, um, that we do have the county, um, like the plan, the maps together. So if you want to compare and contrast. The differences, um, yeah. Those would be available for the public. Okay. Well, we can get 
if we can get those on our website, some maybe we can get Andrew or somebody to put them on the website so they can see what it is. They've been discussed on open meetings. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, next thing up is uh, the Leota Bridge roof repair. Anybody got any news something on that? Uh, the best I can understand is, uh, and you can help me a little bit on that, is the main difference uh, on Lucky was he was doing a complete new decking on the thing. And uh, I actually went out and talked to him about it a little bit. And he says he, he, he puts on a higher gauge metal roof, more decking and everything. He said that raises the price up. <clears throat> so he felt like he was doing about as well as could be done. And he said he had to deal, he had to work around the electric and all kinds of stuff. And uh, so I can't compare the, it's hard to compare things because not, all of them are not the same uh, bit. I mean, they, they're bidding on what they're bidding on, but not the same uh, standards. The scope so, of work is different. Uh, I, I want to make, just real quick, I need to throw this out there. Uh, we're talking about, and I'm, I should have said something last time, but we're talking about you know different gauges of steel and roofing, and that's important. But nothing's more important than the coating that's on the steel, because uh, that's where your real warranty comes from. It does. I mean, between 29 and 26 gauge, it, it's very minimal in thickness. So it's really the coating of the, the product that is what's most important. Uh, so. And I don't know if it makes a difference or not. I don't, it may not, but it's in my district. I mean, it's my district. So I don't know if that means we can just vote on it or I can do it. Or maybe our attorney can have a better opinion on that. I don't, I don't think that that would change what need, what need to be done legally to uh, move forward with the project. But I think if you wanted to make the motion to approve it under that bid for that work, I mean, I, there's no legal issue. That's where I, I, guess, am. I guess I got a question. Is it, and I, I know there's a Leota Frolic board out there, but is there technically a board that that no. oversees that bridge or is it no. just they just they they're they don't they just make suggestions no and, and the funds from this come from uh, the state i believe because they want to preserve yeah um, specifically covered bridges so it's not as there's a the, the county receives a certain amount uh deposited every year i think it's annually um one thousand eight hundred and i think that there are sufficient amounts in the yeah, account currently to cover any of the bids um, that we put forward but again i think to john's point it's they're kind of uh, it's difficult to compare one to the other because you're kind of talking about the scope of work performed and bid on is different and a, and a good thing there to understand for the public to know is that, like you said this is stakes and money down here it's not local money correct yeah, so and this I mean, is the only covered bridge in Scott County, so it's the, is that correct? I mean, yeah, yeah, I so think it's the last yeah, it one built in the state of Indiana. Yeah, so um, it's the, the funds would not be eligible to be used anywhere else but this bridge. Because this commissioner is actually but, certified once a year to the state based on that. I mean, there's, I think it's Park County that has a bazillion covered bridges, so they, they get 18, 50 times however many, but... Um, this is our one and only, our gym, I guess, we've got with the state. Yeah. Um, but now, that is to cover all the repairs of that bridge, correct? That uh, is, for maintenance and upkeep. For how oh, much a year? 1850 a year. 1800 a year? There's $36,000. Yeah, dollars yeah. yeah. So. But, um, do we need to make a motion or what yeah do we, do? we need, we need to, to i mean on. john i mean john come since it's his district and, and he's got a preference then i guess he can i'm going to make the motion if it's open now yeah uh, to allow that bid to go to lucky rose and i think should we give the price or not i think amount. they've already been it, it's yeah it's they already been talked about well, my motion to uh, lucky rose is coming good all right, John's made a motion to uh, accept Lucky Rose's bid uh, for the 
the Leota covered bridge roof repair, and that's for a complete uh, deck, new decking, sheeting, and, and yeah. everything. Yeah. So, Tammy, they've, they've already read the it's nineteen thousand four hundred and forty four dollars, I think, or something. Nineteen thousand eight ninety eight. Oh, okay. You're close. Uh, um, close don't get you anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a motion to go with the lowest bid because I believe we could roof that thing three times for that amount. So I will okay, that's so my two four. We have so, two motions on the floor now. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, you, huh? I, I don't have any of the bids in front of me, so I don't. I don't well, so I don't did anybody that. second the no. first motion? So let's deal with that one first. So, uh, so just to put it to a vote is the second motion. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a caveat in here. Um, I um, I guess I I want because I understand the low bids and and. And that's normally what we would do unless we see that the quality of something is different than the other. Um, and I, I don't want to make a decision yet. I, I, I want to, I guess I want to ask the other people, what are they doing for their, the money that they're, if somebody's low bid and I mean, it's, I mean, I don't think they're putting a roof on next week, are they? Well, I can tell you this much. He, uh, and I don't know if it, waiting, and not a construction guy, but he was putting some sheeting on his own place when I was out there the other day, and they had to wait for the frost to get off of it before oh, yeah. they could put it on their own roofs. So as, as the weather gets colder, I think it's more apt to be springtime before they, I don't, and that's me talking. Not I know that. that. I just, like I said, let's, why don't we, why don't the, and I know this, we've already done this once, but why don't we table this till the next meeting? Because so I, I want to. I would just say. Uh, motion died for lack of second. Yeah. Okay, and then I have another motion. I have to approve the lower bid. To approve the lower bid, so we'll have to take them one at a time. Okay, so yeah. motion died, lack of second. And I don't, and I'm not saying I want to go either way. I want to know more from the other people, like your low bid. I want to know what they're going to do. Are they going to replace the decking? I didn't realize that. Well, I don't, I, it, even, even on Lucky's bid, it didn't say replace the decking. To my yeah. knowledge, it just yeah. said the building. I mean, um, and well, the, we need to, we need to we need to look at apples to apples and know that what we're paying for here is what these guys were bidding over here. So, okay. and, and Lindsey, was, he came in the lowest, and his was replaced uh, decking up to a certain point in that bid on his that was included in the bid. Uh, but, and I mean, and here's, here's, I guess, is where, where I, I kind of want to go with that. I don't think all the decking on that roof needs to be replaced. That's why I don't want to, um, and not, I, not that it wasn't a good idea. And I understand. It's just, I know that at $1,800 a year, uh, it takes a lot of time, long time to recoup $19,000. And, uh, yeah. We don't know what the future holds. I mean, termites, whatever. You know, it. Uh, well, I just. I, I'm just trying to be conservative on it. So I get that. I appreciate that. They spend money. So there's a motion on the table for approval of the lowest bid. Well. Die for lack of second. I would say. <laughs> I assume it's. Plus, John's going. Die for lack of second. I just. Because. I just want to know. I, I get that, and I think that's the appropriate thing to do. But I. Um, I just think that if if Lucky's going to put in his bid, that he's going to replace all the decking that at that price. Then I and I, I guess I know Josh didn't go out there, but I don't know if Ben went out there to see if he talked if, to Zach and I and, uh, and looked at the quotes. And but he didn't go out and inspect it. He did not, because I, I asked him I think at one point in time about step going out there and. See actually looking at the sub roof I'll call it the underlayment yeah. the plywood and see what he thought um, but I'm not for sure if he could get a good assessment of it until you actually rip the metal yeah, I think off that was you can't see the damage was that he could, I get that even if he went out again I, I this is where I think we always get in trouble on bids is that we don't bid 
where everybody's been the same yeah. thing. And 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 I and even in looking at Lucky's, because I was like, wow, that's a lot of that's a lot more than the rest of the bids. And but then now you're saying that he's going to replace the whole thing. Well, and actually he didn't tell me that. Ben did. That after Ben looked at the ben. quotes, he informed Zach and I that they were only really one in one bucket and two in another, so to speak. So that, again, apples to apples. He saw it. He saw it. And in corporations, when they and I think that we need to try to cure toward this, and that maybe this ain't the time for this conversation, but. Um, most of the time they, they make up a, a work scope and that's what everybody bids from that work scope that way when you get those bids in everything is apples to apples yeah. and everybody's been and the if same they don't comply work. with the work scope then that bids tossed out so to speak and then you look at the ones that did bid according to scope yeah yes I'll and i think you. that's that's well i think something like this is, is where we need to ahead i think that's a, i think that's a very good thing and i and quite honestly i'm i'm going to, to readdress that, if if Lucky thinks that all the in his bids thinks that all of them need to be replaced, then I guess everybody needs to bid the same way, and in that way everybody same gate and everything. I'm not well, and the problem we're running into now, to me, is there's been a price put out there. I get that. Well, everybody's put a price out there though. I know, but no. I get that. I get that. I get the that. price of the with all this done. So it would be easy to do it, make up a bid and make it $10 cheaper. Yeah, I get it. I just Not that that would happen, but yeah, I mean, it's out there. Well, well, it's out there. Ten, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but it, it would have to be more than $10 before I would be swayed by something. I mean, even a hundred or five. Yeah, I mean, anyway. even a, a couple hundred, I mean, that ain't. Well, I'm gonna, but, I, I want to table it until the next meeting, so if, if you guys don't, I guess if either one of you. Yeah, so there's a motion to table on the table. <laughs> I'll make I'll table I'll, I'll make a motion to table that table that's on the table yeah. or whatever. Well, well let's let's let's, let's back up a second and, and go back to what Randy's talking about here. You know, the committee or whoever out there, Leota came with. There with, is no committee, but well, but a, somebody came with a beer and said here, out there. came out and said yes. here's here's yeah. what so and so said he'd do yes. it for. Yeah. Um, so somebody reached out to somebody and said, hey, get us a quote for doing something. Yeah. And uh, I guess what we need to do uh, is to create a scope, work scope. Uh, of work and say. Here's what we're asking you to give us a quote on, and maybe Lucky comes back with a different price. But you know, we send somebody out there that knows, hey, here's what needs to be replaced, and says, here's what actually needs to be replaced. It doesn't whether it's all the boards need to be replaced, none of the boards, three fourths of the boards, ten boards, twelve boards, whatever needs to be replaced, and says, here's what I want to bid on is twelve boards or. The whole thing or whatever and say everybody bid on this scope of work uh it's obvious i don't think it's gonna fall down tomorrow and uh i want to i want to give it right and be fair to everybody and and i lucky does great work i'm not anything against lucky rose and no, no, or anybody no. else because i've had a lot of work that lucky's done and seen it and and it's been good so i think that bridge is 26 working on 27 years with so roof is going now and usually you get 20 25 years on a roof i think a shingle roof yeah now lloyd brown built that for a dollar right i don't know so maybe he'll re roof it for the same <laughs> <laughs> i wish somebody would do that anyway and we're talking metal roofs now too yeah. so yeah. It, it, assuming there'll be a guarantee on this like every other roof of ever you're usually talking 50 years so i guess your motion is to table so you can create a scope of work based on the condition of the bridge to mm -hmm. keep quotes consistent is that your motion yes right. i would second that right. <laughs> and i'm going to ask our i guess for it did it are you yay nay or um, Table. My motion, table one. Oh yeah. I don't know. Okay. So John, actually, I guess I usually do that. Yeah. I made the motion to table it. Randy seconded it, and John made that unanimous. So, um, 
I want to I want to ask Ben if he he thinks he could. I mean, he's he's bid stuff before, so I'm gonna have Ben go out there and look at that more in depth and see if he can come up with something and said, hey, here's what needs to be fixed and here's what, and then come up with the scope and then we can all approve it and then we can put it out for bids. So and decking is exposed underneath. Yes, I think so. It's it's, it's, under, yeah, it's the exposed board. underneath the uh, uh, shingles, I believe. So he should be able to. See, well, you see if there's any stain or anything. Yeah, you know, and when in doubt, replace. So. And I, I want to basically inspect the bridge. Yeah. And then give you guys an idea about what you need to. He ought to know. I mean, he wasn't, when I talked to him, only he wasn't sure about what the pricing for what thing would cost anymore. Yeah, but that's not what we're asking him to do. We're just wanting, yeah, we're right. wanting him yeah, to say, please. here's what needs to be yeah. replaced and. And then he can we he can, we can come with a scope of work and say here's what we're putting out there for everybody to bid on. So and even that when they you know he will miss something and well there's always additional. So yeah, speaking be, of that, huh? there'll be add-ons. So <coughs> Tammy, we haven't heard anything about the roof here, have we? No, I was just yeah. no, I was just asking. Um, Josh is out this morning. I don't, I don't yeah, know. last time I heard from Josh is the guy uh, they're wanting to get started on as soon as possible with that. But well, I, I heard not an actual date yet. Well, actually, I don't want to start with all these Christmas decorations around here. But uh, what I was told in the beginning was it took so many weeks to get the material, and, and then after that, it would be six weeks, or three weeks, or something. So skewed anymore? It's hard to so anyway. hard to guess. All right, and moving on. Like uh, November twenty twenty one monthly claims considerations. Everybody had an opportunity to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Mandy Sam. So I'll entertain a motion to accept those. Motion to accept. John makes Second. a motion to accept. I'll let you sign it. I guess. John makes a motion to accept. Randy seconds that and I'll make that unanimous. So next thing on the agenda is the payroll rat ratification for November the nineteenth, twenty twenty one. I'll make a motion to accept. I second. John makes a motion. Randy seconds. I'll make it unanimous. And we had a longevity in there too. I saw that. On. <clears throat> and there's a longevity ratification for November 24, 2021. Do I have a motion to, to accept that? In case you're not for sure about your longevity, motion. you have to be motion an employee made. for five years as of November the 15th. Actually, there's two and then there's a schedule job. of longevity uh, payments. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, so is, there more that are, than, is there more than one here? There should be two. I'll, I'll check. There's those That's two right there. Like. Yeah, that's longevity. That's John made a motion to accept the longevity ratification for November 24, 21. I second. Randy seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. Getting back to business here. Uh, the EMS director position. What's your what's your uh, pleasure? Uh, what's you guys got any comments on? Uh, I, w I will say a comment for uh, we do anything here or if we do anything. Um, we had uh, we had some good candidates. Uh, interviewed four candidates. And I think all four of them were, you know, had the qualifications. A couple of them interviewed, I think, better than uh, some of the others. Um, uh, but I think uh, I think we had four viable candidates. So with that, I'll open it up for anybody to have a discussion. Or well, I'd like to say that uh, I, I think uh, probably all of them. Could have actually done the job, maybe, but um, uh, we had to be specific. Uh, what fits us in this particular situation, and uh, that's how I'm making my my uh, suggestion. John, you got any questions, answers, or no statements? No. 
So I guess at this time I'll entertain a motion to for a nominee or I'd like to nominate Nick. Nick Olick? Yeah. All right. Uh, Randy nominates uh, Nick Olick as the next uh, EMS director. Do I have a second? All right. Um, I guess I'll, uh, I'll almost second that because I think uh, we're to I think we're at a crossroad with with EMS, and it's going to take a certain type of individual to to uh, be at the helm right now. And I think uh, with the a proven record that he has at other at another location, I think uh, like we'd be uh, I think we'd be in good hands uh, to move us forward. So let me make a statement or two. Which I'm going to vote yes on that also. Uh, and there's some reasons, good and bad, on this thing. At one, is I know we're going to get like uh, there's a pretty good chance we'll bring six people over to their paramedics or EMTs, uh, so it's going to be some good people coming over with him. Uh, after talking to some employees out there, I know they like him. Uh, the one thing I don't like, uh, if you bring good new people in, sometimes you replace some good old people. Uh, and I fear that's going to happen. Uh, I'm concerned that we are not going to be in the middle of that. Um, that will be his decision. And well, I think uh, uh, that's the way we understood it. Yeah. I th well, yeah. I got agree. And I have a concern that we could lose some people who've been good employees for many years. I hope that's not the case, but yeah. I think that's a possibility, and I'm concerned for that, and I hope if that happens that we might want to intervene Well, I think before any, we just get away, before that just happens. I think if anybody is going to be terminated, I mean, uh, I think it has to come through here or should come through your commissioners. Yeah, uh, that's the way I understood it. Is that, it, not, is that not the case? It, it should. Uh, you guys should be it, advised of it just be from the legal standpoint because you want to make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed so you guys do need to be advised if I don't it's think an involuntary we've voted on termination I don't think that makes sense. at that point could we intervene to keep them from being if it would go, go to executive and then you would have a discussion and then you guys could work something out at that point yes okay. well I don't think in the past we've actually voted on termination generally what happens and tell me if I'm wrong is uh, usually the director will let us know ahead of time this is going to happen and we may discuss it, but I don't think we've ever intervened and said no. That's what I'm asking. I don't know if that's... And, uh, that is the only concern I have. Otherwise, I see a lot of positives here. Yeah. I anyway, that's just all I wanted to hear. Yeah, I agree with that because, uh, you know, as I, you know, I think was stated in an interview that I didn't want a, you know, a bomb to go off out there and people just to run to the exits I mean yeah uh, and even long-term employees that that have been there and have been dedicated to the service should have an opportunity but uh, what I will say is that you know with a with a new regime as as happens you know a lot uh, you know if someone your new boss and things are changing in a different direction if you don't want to get on board and go in that direction then you know you either you know change to with with the times or or you decide that hey this isn't what i want to do and and uh, i don't believe in those that direction and go on but i don't want to see people outed or people lose their positions just because of who they are or what their past is so yeah um, I just I don't want to see that whatsoever that's what I, I will support Nick and what he does and, you know but like you're saying you know it, it's I, it's not I, I want to know the reason I and it has to be a good reason right <laughs> yeah that's yeah I, but anyway I, my vote is, is yes on it well, but I just want to get my little caveat. Well, yeah, I, I get that, I and, I, and, and 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 I, I I agree with that. But uh, uh, so I'm gonna make that unanimous. But I, again, uh, we with every time we make a change, and or anytime anybody makes a change in in management, 
you know, you, some people will stay, some people won't. Um, um, and, you know, that's their prerogative. Uh, along with what you said, John, I have had uh, at least a couple of people contact me and say that if something would happen that they, and if there was a position open, because right now, I think there might be a couple of positions open right now. Uh, that what we have in the future, we don't know. I mean, but uh, if there's positions open, somebody might come back. I mean, and these people are people that are familiar with the community and live here and, and uh, left for the same reasons that somebody else may leave now. So, uh, so anyway. Uh, Yes, Marcella. I just had a question. Now, you're going to have a new director. Or is the financial aspect of that department? Is there going to be a better eye on it? So what happened the last time? The yes. Director? Yes. There, I Thousands think. Thousands of dollars, you know, was wasted. Yeah. Well, so, I think. Now, uh, how are you going to come to that part? Well, I, I asked or, that from now on them bring their financial records to the meetings. Like when they're asking for something, they're going to use some monies for something. Yeah. Well, actually, there is a there is a protocol uh, for for grants, and uh, and I think a lot of this got messed up in some grant writing and and not necessarily the grant writing, but uh, the you know how the process happened after the we approved them. Uh, in the future, we're hoping to have a better handle on uh, how those are. Once the step of approval coming here and getting approval, there is a, there's I think three other steps. There's a step of of um, okay you approved it, and then when you get the pr approval from whoever you're getting the grant from, hey come back and go hey I got approval on that grant. Well then it goes, you know when they get the funds from that grant, it goes to the auditor and the auditor at that point can tell them hey your funding is here and now it'll be dropped in your line item and you can spend it. Well, you know, as you know, a lot of times with credit cards and everything else, you, when you spend it before you actually have the money, it's kind of difficult, but that's where we need to be better. And I mean, I'm gonna take some of that responsibility as well, but um, I think there's more eyes on departments now with monies uh, than there has been in the past for the fact that they just, you know, I think dropped the ball as far as assuming that somebody was watching what they did and how they, that they were doing it properly. But um, I don't, you know, I mean, I'm the one that came up and said, I, I thought we ought to have an office manager to oversee the finances of it and a, and a medical person to do the other side of it. But I've kind of come away with that um, and think that uh, maybe we can utilize the advisory board a little bit more out there uh, to to oversee some of the you know that that part of it of, of uh, hey where's your where's your, what are your equipment sales and or what are you, what are you buying and what are you not buying and and quite honestly there, I'm gonna be honest I don't think there should be any major purchases out there for quite a long time so. Uh, equipment should be pretty good shape. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, the issue. Well, no, I, I, I'm going to jump in a little bit. I, I don't mean to go too far with this, but uh, I mean, past director got a lot of flack over this. But nothing happened there at the council and the commissioner and everybody else wasn't aware of. Maybe we, maybe he was confused, but if he was confused, we were all confused. Uh, so, and we came out a lot better off because of it. And, uh, we, we did end up with a big override money-wise. But I'll be the first to tell you, I thought it was going right, and I didn't realize it was a mistake until it was too late. I don't think any of us did. And uh, so that's just me. I'm throwing it in there. I'll sit there and look through emails and everything else where I've had people take all kinds of credit for everything. But, uh, <coughs> I think you know, the mistakes was made, but, you know, I think we could be a whole lot of us could jump in on the mistakes, I think me included. I think you agree uh, that the financial report should follow also, right? Or I don't know what you're talking about, Randy. Oh, well, the, you know, before they, we approve, if they want us to approve something, we need to see their financial records to see if they actually have the money in their funding before. 
Well, they didn't have the money in the funding. It was coming from the CARES Act, which was into a different fund altogether. Right. So the funding wasn't out there. We had to approve the funding. But and we, we did. did. We didn't have proof of. But we approved the funding. We approved the funding, but we didn't have proof of the grant. That he had the grant. I don't know. Well, the FEMA grant. Well, I don't know. You're FEMA probably right about that. The FEMA grant was a reimbursable yeah. grant. Yeah. And then he attempt we we filed like in the test of this because I was in the middle of the filing since we were in between the EMA director at the time as well. Um, and so we sent through the uh, federal portal a submission for equipment. Mm -hmm. And then FEMA was not into kind of like a lot of our ARPA monies. They're not in the capital outlay, which is what a lot of times people want. They want to buy pieces of equipment. They want to buy things. But then FEMA says, this isn't just COVID related because this equipment is going to last beyond our pandemic. Um, so they what they scratched all that and they said, we'll go back though. And you have to go back because we had to do reworking of that and go back and pull actual man hours that were COVID runs. And then they would give them a premium allotment i'll say per hour on the covid based runs and so his grant money that he was hoping would do 75 percent of an ambulance and a, a chase vehicle like two covid yep. tandem teams i'll call it that 75 percent it fema totally blitz that so rather than i'd say checking with fema to say well you do this first they changed the outlay on the, the money. So we had to go back and rework it. And then, then it came in grossly under what was anticipated as a reimbursement. And again, you always need to know if you've got the money in reserve if that grant falls through. And I think that's where this kind of didn't yeah. work. And I would work. say it's confusing now. You can imagine it was confusing a year ago. Uh, so I, I totally agree with you on one thing. We need to slow the process down and make sure what's in place before we do it again. Well, I agree with you on that. ARP money is different than CARES Act money because our CARES Act money, once they decided that uh, that you can do it off payroll, everything, it was a one group sent the money to the counties and you can spend it any way you want. Um, our, is not like that and it's not and you can't do that um, I know we have a bunch of equipment I know we have the best equipment that money can buy um, the issue I have now is that uh, we have five brand new ambulances out there and and um, and the issue is going to be that they're all going to come unless we take one and say we're going to this is going to be a primary and we put more miles on that ambulance uh we're in, in three or four years we're going to be in a we're going to be in a pickle because we're going to have to be replacing them all at the same time and i don't want to i don't want that to happen also i guess my other thing is, is if we're only having three full-time ambulances why do we need five uh i have had that i have had some people con or, uh, contact me asking if we'd be interested in selling an ambulance because uh, some of the ambulances and the reason that we got them so fast was these were ambulances that were sitting on showroom floors and they were discounting them and that's how we ended up with some of these ambulances so fast they weren't building them where it takes so long out to build one. Uh, these were already demos or something sitting on a floor someplace and, and that's how we got them so fast. So there might be a situation where we might be able to sell one, recoup some more money. Um, but actually, now we're if we're talking about EMS, I would like to uh, ask, and I don't know if, I, I think I mentioned this at our, our last meeting about uh, the two trucks that are out there and the two truck or trucks that the highway department needs and, and to see if we can do a, a deal with Possibly, uh, John Jones I know has two Durangos that would be more suited for EMS, um, and and not the trucks and the tr and the trucks. I know Kevin. I talked to him, and he's he'd be interested in trading the two vehicle, two trucks that he had, the Colorado and another truck that he was going to trade in for two new trucks. But the the problem is nobody's got trucks, uh, so. 
maybe it's something we can trade, get something that's more beneficial to the EMS service, and Kevin gets the two trucks that he needs for his his stuff. And yes, there'd be an expense to to move the lights and stuff to another vehicle, but I think the same lights would work on something else, or we'd not be able to do something there. But um, I'd like to see if uh, we can get Kevin and I guess Nick or whoever here to be talking with John Jones and maybe see if that that big transaction could happen and if it would benefit everybody and it may not but it, it may I mean uh, the other thing is is we got a Kubota that's sitting in a that container out there that uh, probably hasn't been ran four times since we bought it uh, what would be your guys' thought process on doing something with that Kubota, whether trying to sell it, trying to do something, you know? I'm just looking at it. I'm not ready to make a decision. No, I know. I'm, yeah, that's I'm what I'm asking. It. To, yeah, it may be a good thing. I don't know. Because I don't, I mean, it's a $20,000, you know, item that, you know, I know the commissioners turned it down and and the council turned him down and and I think because he got CARES money, he bought it out of the CARES money without, you know, so, and I think the issue there, I think it was already bought and is, you know, but I don't think we needed it, so. And I'm well, off. I'm for looking at it. I'll, I'll agree that the, uh, I, don't, I don't think the analyst department needs it, uh, but maybe I'd like to look into it, maybe, uh, getting it to uh, Pigeon Roost, maybe to help the grounds down there, because, I mean, my thought is, regardless how low hours it's used, and we're gonna lose money on it, um, this way we can keep it in the county and still get use out of it, some department can get use out of it, and loan it out to Pigeon Roost for now. No, is there a place to keep it down there, John, or no? no. No, I, I, I'm not sure what I want to do with it at all, quite simply, so I'm all, I'm all for exploring it. But I do remember having a meeting talking about it because I questioned whether we were going to buy it local or not. And uh, I think that yeah. came through uh, it's redevelopment, didn't it? Redevelopment. Because I remember asking Hauser if he could buy the same thing, and he said no. So it may not have went through here, it went through redevelopment. It, it did come through here because he came through and asked us. Uh, that's when Bob was still here. Yeah. And and uh, I said, why do we need that? And then we kind of said no. And yeah. then it went to the council. And he tried to get funding for it. And the council said no. And then he got it. Okay. He did it. Bought it through development. But I do think maybe you, we should still look at the cost of what they would give it. Yeah. Give us for it because trucks aren't the only thing that's hard to get, and prices have went up. So maybe. Oh, it's. Well, we well, can come out all right. Just, all. just think but about it. That's all. Well, I'm yeah, I'm for that. Going back where we started, I'm all for watching a lot more accountability on how the money's spent. Yeah, yep. I'm all for that part of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought you was. I thought yeah. you said that before. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's yeah. move on. Uh, transfer station hours and operations manager position. Did, did they vote on that position? Yes. Yes. Position? yes they did. did. Okay. For you the table. <laughs> I, I like there's motions. And then... <laughs> you guys have a little much on it. Okay. Yeah. This is I pulled the BNB's hours at Scottsburg, and you know you and I uh, always had talked at one point in time the other day about possibly looking at transfer station hours and modif modifying those. Just look at that. That's just for your to take a look at, and we might. At the next meeting, entertain that, and maybe it might be something genuine. One of you guys might want to kick off if you want to change hours out there. But that would leave them closed all day Monday, but have a late night. And then you can see I came up with 40 hours based on the BNB schedule. Mm -hmm. Most positions here at the county, you're mandated to take a lunch break because we don't pay you through lunch, but they are a one man person or one woman person out there and a uh, one woman show. So they, uh, get paid through lunch because there's no relief for them at lunch. So I, it, that's why the hours will I think out. you and I have talked about this as well. And I, I think that I never, I never put two and two together that, uh, that technically Sunday was their only day off. Yeah. So, uh, unless they requested a day off, but without pay or something, but I think it, 
it wouldn't hurt anybody because a lot of operations, like I said, B and B's closed on Mondays as well. I think that's a, you know, Sunday Monday would be a good, good, uh, I guess, offset of, of working a partial day on Saturday. And someone can say, well, you only worked on noon or whatever, but that, that screws your whole day up. So. And five days a week and a Saturday, most of it. So the work hours are up at the top. The actual operation hours that you would post for people to drop things off are at the bottom. So Which, that gives them the extra 15 minutes to get their deposit in here. Okay. But now this isn't something we're voting on today. No, that's, that's just, just what you guys look to take and think about a better way to operate. And then attached yeah. to your hours example is another application that was turned in out of? After the date. Yes, out of date. Right? Um, I like this. Also, uh, well, let's look at that and come up with a new schedule for January. Um, I guess also, uh, when I guess we need to interviews. We need to set up interviews for. Uh, so I guess if you guys want to pick up, and I'll say this three or four, or three or four people and do interviews, because uh, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, you know, I think the first time we ever did this, we got one or two, and now we got a boatload. So, and and again, uh, it's it's going to be a hard decision because there's several candidates that that fit the bill. So, um, so I guess get your get your three or four, or if you got three or whatever, uh, let's get them to Tammy, and we'll set up a set up a interviews and it obviously it's not going to be this week so do you guys like tuesday nights to interview how, how does december the 7th or or either thursday december the 9th sound to you guys and we usually start them at five five to six see what's going on i know you were checking on <laughs> i'm thinking they're checking my wife's schedule that's what i'm saying yeah. you said december what a seventh or the ninth? The seventh is a Tuesday. The ninth is a Thursday. I'm going to say the ninth because yeah. I got. I'm, I'm thinking I got something on the seventh. I'll give you guys a couple more days when you get back from conference to get the names to. Yeah. yeah. So December the ninth at five o'clock, we'll schedule an executive for interviews. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Everybody good with that? Yep. I'm good with it. All right. Uh, next up. Miss Health. Snuck in. Snuck in. Yeah. I see your pictures here. Hmm? I see your pictures here. Yes. Uh, you guys all have them, right? I see, I see the houses down, but, yes. but the rest of it is kind of... I right. drove by there not a couple of days ago. I was like, holy... Yeah. So there was still equipment out there, Tim said, working on it. But as far as the unsafe building, that part's been taken care of. So I don't know if that's more of a question for Zach, if we just speak directly about the building and then take care of, like, send a letter and start the process of the garbage. Yeah, that has to do with... Uh, Lover's Lane? Yes, Lover's Lane. That has to do with... Uh, a different one. Yeah, it's a different one. Mm -hmm. They call it a... I can't remember what you call it, just the trash. There's like well, I mean, it's solid waste. Solid waste. Yes. So, um, yeah, so the unsafe building part, though, is looks like it's... It's done. It's been done. taken care of. It's mm -hmm. down on the ground, but like I said, there seemed like, you know, I thought it was going to be a, a grassy area. And it seems like those back buildings, I mean... You're talking about the RV? I'm talking the RVs there. Mm -hmm. It looks like the guy that I, when I drove by there was out there just welding or doing something like it was a big shop. So it was almost like I don't know what the intentions are, but I think that again, I think it's going to fall into a couple different ordinances because your vehicles are going to fall underneath the sheriff ordinance, depending on how many are out there, and then like the solid waste is going to be our other ordinance. But as far as the building, which is what we had the hearing on. It's down. It's down. Right, Zach? Was that I guess, correct thinking? I guess what I pictured 
and this guy saying, hey, I'm going to take it down, clean it up, and it's going to be nothing there. Uh, that has That's not there yet. The only thing there is, like, tires. Yeah, so that's a vector problem. Yes. With and obviously you can't burn those. Yeah, there's a different... I just think we're under... We're, t we're talking about two things that the health department deals with, mm -hmm. but they were not cited for. Yeah. Right. Oh, I get that. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Today we just need you guys to either decide if you have the the unsafe building has been cleaned up to your standard, and then we can always start the process of one, everything again, basically for the solid waste. Let me clarify, and maybe this is the exact question: the building's down. The building's down. But the debris is still there. Solid but, waste, yes. But when when we when we here, here, when we uh, Okay, when we uh, thank you, when we pass this or pass to move forward or whatever, uh, I believe in the document that you stated the bid. the bid to clean up was debris was removed. I think that was from the building. Yes. Well, the debris still there. That siding. And actually, some siding. of it's still sitting on top of the foundation. Yeah, I mean. You have a couple of different options. You could one just we could continue it. What do you want to do? Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, it doesn't sound like it's up to your standard. It's not. I so I was shocked when I went by there because I was I was dreaming this. Yeah. You know, green grassy knoll out there. And, yeah. Uh, green. <laughs> well, I think they're still working on it. <laughs> um, so that's the good thing. And so I we could give them a couple more weeks, see how that goes. But then we can also go ahead and send a letter saying. Just so you know, like the buildings, you're working on the building, but like the solid waste is a separate issue that we yeah. do want to address. I think too. I think at this point a letter or somebody driving out there going, "Hey, what's your intentions?" And okay. Yeah. We can do that. But it's not where I thought it was going to be. Okay. We can just continue it, Zach. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and just see how they progress on it, and then I'll have. I mean, it's down. I mean, I'll get. Yeah, to yeah. It's yeah. down, and but. Uh, but if the materials, but the stuff still scattered all over the yard. And yeah, and the I would new property. I'm assuming an enforcement of it though is. When it comes I would have to go look at what the findings were in the minutes uh -huh. and on the original orders, but building unsafe for human habitation, the building doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. The enforcement mechanism you'd be talking about now is uh, the solid waste uh, ordinance. Okay. Probably. So you yeah. think the unsafe building ordinance part piece of it is completed, technically? I guess I can't say factually whether it's completed right. or not, but if the building doesn't exist, I'm just right. saying that there could be problems of trying to say that there's an unsafe building. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because the building's I get what you're not saying. there. <laughs> I, but but I, I'm fine with the idea that you hold this over and get it just send something that, okay. you know, um, I guess it's your guys's pleasure. relative to one that's or that's what I would do I I was I drove by there a couple of days a couple of different days and thinking that yeah you know, first I mean in a month they've done a lot oh yeah I, I'll give them that it's yeah. down and that's but but there's still you know the debris is still okay. there and then look you know I don't know and and granted the guy brought the property he can do what it, whatever he wants if he wants to put a, a shed out there and work out of it he, he's right. more than entitled to do that they, there is a camper there with the camper you know, I, I think mean he can is, have the camper he on can the have property. it there he can be parked there as long as he's right. not living in it and then I don't know like how often like if he has a plan for the tires like you know you, you can only like drop them off at certain times in certain places right so I usually farm I can send him out there to, or we can call the <laughs> <laughs> Don't admit that. Um, <laughs> I wonder if you're um, listening. <laughs> I'll send him out there to kind of get his, what his plans are, yeah, and then give you guys like I said, update. You know, and I guess what I'm, I was picturing was something different. But you know, the guy owns the property, yeah. and there's a building back there, a shed or whatever. He wants to keep that and yeah. work out of it, do whatever, tinker or whatever. That's on him. But okay. uh, but I, the the stuff scattered around the perimeter of the, the fence or wherever it is. There's okay. still some sheet metal and that stuff out there. Uh, and on top of the where the building actually was, there's still some debris yeah. sitting on top of it too. So Okay. But I'm fine with, you know, just 
touching base with him going hey you know this is it or you yeah done or whatever right okay what else, what else you got um so i have two cloaks here um i want to put some i've talked to you guys about this before putting some heat back there in those bays mm -hmm. i think they're pretty much apples to apples um and i don't know if you guys just want me to accept the lowest quote but that is what we are looking at I'm going to ask the same thing. We just got to ask the wall goes, is, is, is this uh, apples and apples or apples and oranges? What we got here, guys? Uh, obviously, unlike you, the lowest bid would seem like the logical thing, but mm -hmm. I don't know if we're, are we? I think Randy and Michelle worked on the scope of work. Yeah, I changed it a little bit, though, from, that was in April, and building materials and things have, I guess, changed. gone up quite a bit. Um <laughs> so these are new quotes. One's dated 11:15. One's dated 11:23. Um, well, I think you know what I'm asking, though, don't you? Are they both bidding on the same thing? Yes. Exactly. So yes, thing. from my understanding, yes. So what I did is um, took one quote, didn't give them the price, called the other company, and said, "This is exactly what they're quoting me, or this is exactly what the scope of work is." and gave all this to them and then asked for the same quote. Okay. Um, one's I think a little bit more detailed in their mm -hmm. description. description. Yes, thank you. Um, so bid, that makes me a little concerned, the lower, but... The bid for the lower is exactly, in other words, the bid for lower, if we took that lower bid, it would have everything included on in this other bid. That's what I'm trying to say. Are I mean, on the same I guess... Time? I know, I guess it's not a... But I tried to make it apples to apples as best I could without yeah. being like, this is this person's quote. You know, I, obviously, I, they're going to look at the price and try to beat us. Well, I, I, see, to I believe you. Yeah, I, just, I just know how these things go afterwards. Somebody's going to say, well, wait a minute. <clears throat> and there's always, you know, stuff that comes up and yeah. things like that. Well, but. I see some items down here um, at the bottom of the one. It says electrical outlets stall in various locations, eliminating switches. Mm -hmm. Not the drive through air and replace a bad sensor on a light. It's so the different. bad sensor um, would probably be replaced by them anyways um, because they were the company that installed it. So, like, that's not going to be included here on this one. But though. see, that's why it's not over here. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. But I mean, that's probably just a couple hundred bucks if I was guessing. It's just a sensor. Because I see over light. here, he does say two new outlets. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the easiest thing to do would be take the lower one. I just want to make sure that we take that. Yes. The lower, but then afterwards they say, "Well, we got to do all this extra," and it ends up being about the same price or something. Like that. I get that. Yeah. So I'll entertain a motion if, to accept one of the bids or not. Well, what? I'll make a motion to. Are we making a motion to? Pick I would like to right pick now? a bid today so I can get uh -huh. heat out there, Ace. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're a little cold sometimes. Aren't you you got to keep five gallon drum. No, crash. five more months. Oh, okay. Four, four more months. months. Uh, are you asking? Motion? My no. motion is to have no water heating in your building. Okay. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. Uh, Randy makes a motion to accept the bid for from Miller Heating and Cooling. I'll, I'll second that. John seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. And I'll I will say the quote was for seven thousand one hundred fifty-one dollars and seventy-two cents. Okay. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. We will appreciate that. Um, and then, last but not least, is grant applications. And I will say I do um, my grant applications a little differently. I like to know that I'm getting the money before I come <laughs> to you guys and say. Uh, will you approve this? Because really, we can always say at the very end of the day, um, as long as we haven't signed a contract, we can always say we don't want this. Um, and even if we do sign the contract, we can always, you know, file something to send it back to them. Um, so I like whenever I come and ask for a grant, it's because I've been told either in a, in a letter that's like certified from the State Department of Health or organization that you are receiving these funds. Um, so the first one is from the State Department of Health. It's to continue our COVID testing site through January um, to June of next year. Um, it's just another $50,000. I think this is like the fourth time that we've gotten the 50000 So. And this pays for a person? 
No, so wise. this, um, so what we do right now is we contract with the hospital. So the hospital has the free site, and then they just send us an invoice every month for the personnel time that we, um, okay. that they spend. And the way that this grant works, it's technically reimbursable, but um, basically once we have started our COVID site in January, I can ask for all 50000 at one time. So, but it is technically reimbursable. So what, what? But what you're spending the grant money on, the hospital is doing the testing most of the time. Yes. And then, uh, but it's for man hours. That they spend. To the hospital. Mm -hmm. But it's not for any supplies or anything. The hospital's supplying the. Well, the state gives us supplies, they, but so it's not, I don't have to buy them out of okay. 50000 right. okay. Yeah, okay. they give us um, So they just keep supplies. doing the grants or the COVID. Yes, materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just out of curiosity, does the you know, state also provide the stuff for the hospital as well, or is it are they purchasing that? Um, if it's for like their personal patients, they would purchase that. But if it's for the testing site, we provide that. So we provide the PPE, mm -hmm. um, any rapid testing swabs and tubes for the PCR testing. Yeah. Um, anything from gloves, the shields. purchasing their own. <clears throat> yeah, if they're okay. doing it out of um, for their patients that they'll charge for. Okay. That's their stuff, and then our stuff. They keep it in a completely separate Sorry. area. And that's then, just information for me. I just want yeah. that. Yeah, and I know that stuff is well. If you guys pay attention to EMS, like gloves and things like that are going up again. So that's stupid. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, another grant. I don't know if you're going to do the other. We'll just do it all together. Okay, sorry. Um, and then another one, this is the fourth year that I will be um, getting or applying for this grant. It's called the DEFA grant, so it's an emergency assistance grant for nutritional assistance for HIV-positive clients up at our Austin one-stop shop um, student organization called the Greater Health Foundation of Indianapolis. Um, this one is actually in advance, so they'll just send us a $5,000 check um, at the beginning of the year, and we... Um, spend through that so we have like a small food pantry up there um, they can also do like a, a food car to like the JC store um, for our HIV clients up there so and that's so strictly for HIV yeah and that is uh, managed and kind of controlled by our care coordination um, positions our two positions up there so they have to be enrolled in our care coordination services Those two ones um, mm -hmm. and then like if you want another food card you have to bring back your receipt to show that you used it for groceries um, things like that. And does that put us on the hook for after January? Um, no, so this would this would go from January 1st to um, December 31st next year. So this would be continuing And you've already got it. I have a contract in my email signed for you. But that's what you were saying earlier, yes. that you, mm -hmm. when you come to us, you, you pretty much know 99.9% yes. .9 that you have the contract. Yes. We would not be on the hook for anything. So if we don't have this grant, um, it's just a service we could not provide to clients. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure because we're closing that. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> there's four positions at Austin that are grant funded. And all my grant funded positions know, like, if that grant goes away, your position kind of goes away with it. Um, two of them have already been, my grant has been renewed. Um, I think I got came back to the position. Yeah, that's for the care coordination, which is kind of what coordinates with our. Those are for people who are HIV positive, get services through Ryan White um, and different things through the state. Um, that's renewed through September of next year, and then my grant that funds an HIV tester and HIV outreach coordinator. I've not heard whether that's renewed for 2022, and that's a calendar year grant, so it should start in January. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting to hear. That's the IU grant? No, that is through the State Department of Health, too. That's for HIV prevention. <clears throat> Speaking of that, mm -hmm. I mean, I know you've already gave me this information, but calendar year 2021, I mean, how many new HIV cases have we had? Oh, what did that email say? Three? Yeah. I just want you to tell me. I have noticed it seems like our deaths are on the rise. For COVID? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Last I saw you was like 84. Yes. And yeah. Been more I mean, then. so I think with COVID deaths, it <clears throat> kind of delayed, right? Because mm -hmm. usually if someone passes away, it's like a four, six, sometimes even months after they've been diagnosed. So yeah. it's kind of normal to see like a little spurts like that after we've had 
a big increase. So I just happen to look in the, the memories, and a year ago was like 0.5. Mm -hmm. So it's like double. Yeah. But I mean, I think we've had probably if you look at the number of cases that we've had since then too, they're probably a lot higher. And I'm not making a statement. <coughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. noticed that, and I thought it was concerning. Yeah. And we have had a couple of vaccinated deaths, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but significantly, mostly are unvaccinated. So. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, but I think you need to motion on the grants. I will. Okay. <laughs> That's it. All right. I just want to make sure you didn't have a third grant. No, just these two. I'll entertain a motion to accept the two grants that uh, she already has funding for. John makes a motion. Okay. Randy seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. So. Those for me. Then Tammy Kelly goes with you uh, for the council. Yes, she Okay. We got a question in the back. Uh, how about the people living in the shed on Lee Frankfurt? Where are we at on that property? That would be a question for area planning, unless one of you. Actually, to... yes. That, that okay. we took that away from the health department. That, that went to a letter going to be sent from the area area plan to the homeowner. So. <laughs> <laughs> what is Do you I have an update on that, sir? I'm waiting for an answer. Okay. I have not sent a letter out yet because I knew where the family was living here in Scottsburg and they left one night and have not returned to that rental property. So I am unsure as to where to send the letter. They live, they're supposed to be living in a one room apartment somewhere with all children or something. Are you talking about? Are you talking about the? Uh, I might be able to find out the owners, Debbie, the owners. If yeah, she was living here in Scottsburg, because right, she said, yeah, if they're not living there no longer, they moved. But now they're living in a <clears throat> bad condition, as far as I know, where they're at now. So. Shouldn't the letter just be sent to the property address that's certified, and at least we have proof that a letter can be sent? Did you hear that? No, I'm sorry. Send the letter to the cert to the address that we're that's in question. Certified letter. Okay. I mean, if it doesn't get there, that's not oh. on us. But not sending the letter is on us. Actual versus constructive notice. Because at that point, after something an action's been taken, then we can. That'll start that process there. But Randy, if you went out and looked at that property, even though Tim okayed it, still what's all on there the debris. And they're supposed to be dumping the outhouse stuff out on the property, on the grounds, rather than have somebody come in and service it. I mean, you got pictures of that one property? You need to go out and look at that property. I'm going to be honest, I haven't been back out there uh, I can't for at least 30 Tim days or better. Again, I think that's the exact same issue that we're dealing with with Lovers Lane. The unsafe building was taken it's a down it's a different thing. Yeah, it's and then they're, they're different. <clears throat> if they're <laughs> dumping their weight if they're dumping their waste it on the grounds then yes. that is a health department issue um i don't know if that allegation has ever been like, no that's the first i heard that yeah. yeah um that's what they're saying they're doing with it like i said they're still burning wood in that it's unsafe well, it's like nothing's being done nothing well um, I mean, if you can't get out to the owners, can't you go out to the property and search some kind of papers or let them give you a forward address? Let's, let's discuss that. We'll have, we'll have right. to discuss that and try to figure out how, how we can do that legally with our attorney and legally through the area plan and legally through the health department. So let's, let's, we'll, have, we'll have a private meeting and see if we can all come to terms with what the yeah. best course of action is, but um, that would be you guys. To you're, look. You're, be worth your well, I've actually been out there two or three times. I haven't been out there in the last thirty days, but I, 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 I will ask you this because it's obvious you have family that live close there that you they're watching it. Plus, are there are there concerned. how old are the kids that are that are there? I don't know if they're actually there. I'm just saying I've seen some. Okay. One looked right. like they were about ten. You know, I don't know. If but you don't know if they're they're 24 hours a day. But even if there's no children in there, I get that. In the shed I, that I get specs. that. Well, and that's where, that's where, that, me being on the area plan board and and talking with other area plans around uh, the Jason counties, 
um, we've kind of come to a conclusion at our boards that we're not going to, you know, a rule is a rule is a rule, and and even though you want to say it's a tiny home or whatever, it doesn't meet any kind of standards whatsoever. So, um, and I ask other communities or other commissioners what they do, and they said we just don't do it. You know, so we need to come to that conclusion that even though we don't want you sleeping in a tent or sleeping, you know, out underneath a tree, that that shed's not, you know, 950 square foot and isn't considered a home. So, um, but as as far as the, this particular situation, we're going to have to get everybody together in a meeting and, and come up with a, a solution of how we're going to direct the letter, how we're going to direct. The, the rebuttal and how we're going to come to a solution because because it's I'm sure this isn't the only person uh, but it that place sits so close to the road that you see it mm -hmm. and you and you drive past it and you know it so it's probably some um, Green Acres is probably one of those things that needs to be talked about in that meeting too because I know you guys just adopted that right we were waiting to you're talking about the one particular guy that parks out on the road and everything uh, we were waiting to take that over before we addressed him right but if you, you're taking it over now right yes yes as of November yeah yeah I drove by there two days ago and I bet there's a great truck in the road so okay. that may be something and at, this, at this point yeah we can go through there with the, the police officer can go through there and have them towed those are out on not the road. exactly that way well they got to go through a process right but i mean it, it's a there's it's a, a shorter process than what we was looking at yeah but as far as the the property itself then we're going to probably be coming down your road again because yeah. it's yeah. i don't think it's an unsafe living quarters right it's just there's too much debris that you couldn't even find the door right it may be in, yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah so and <clears throat> Does that qualify as an executive session or no? No. I, don't, I mean, I don't think so. I don't, I don't but know But we can how. schedule just That's a Zoom later. call. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, I'm trying to figure out, like, what exactly you know, we're talking about in terms of, because it sounds like people are not living there now. No, they are. I think the complaint that came to me was that the person had, like, there's, like, a mother daughter our mother son situation yeah, like the son brother sister brother sister um and he, the, the person who lives in like the shed type thing does not have the proper like health amenities i guess there was something about the family moved to a different location and we couldn't send away that was for the new frankfurt property okay so the property out in green acres which is oh, the road that, this okay. place we're looking at i think looks worse than the other two places yeah. <laughs> actually i got some pictures yeah. there. but i mean i just i think that's if we're going to talk about properties like that that correspond with area plan sheriff's department and health department then mm -hmm. that's probably one that needs to be talked about too you can call we can call like a joint session yeah. or something session. Um, open door yeah mm -hmm. um, to discuss because sheriff's department would be the vehicles, and then we would obviously be anything health related. Or so, as far yeah, as I guess, but that's that's their. I mean, we can't. That's their decision. There's what, multiple. What the sheriff does with. Right. Yeah. There's multiple pictures there. Right. So. <clears throat> yeah, and then that would just be like an OB. The you've uh, seen it. So. The. Uh, the other two days ago. Solid waste. That there's any type justice. of well, actually, sewage there's more mm -hmm. issues. It's, like all those are uh, ordinance looks, violations. It looks like sand filed. Oh yeah. In <laughs> well, that's that's what you're okay. talking about. So I would, they yeah, would need to get a copy yeah, of a yeah. Yeah. citation and then that, okay. under the ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> there's probably some type of reference in the ordinance for an informal mm -hmm. hearing in mm -hmm. the health department prior to right. moving forward on anything. Okay. I think that's how I would handle it because the, I mean, the unsafe building is a different, right? right. That's a different, right? Well, I think it just gets confusing because separate ordinances to, fall under the health department. Yeah, we're trying to fit a, uh, you know, a circle into a square. You know, yeah. Thick. Like uh, we need to find the right thing yes. to go after. The other thing is we don't. Just to be clear, we don't have authority over like safety of children. Right. Right. We, we, I think we discussed that last yeah, time. Yeah, we, we don't. Right. We, you, you guys do not have any authority over that. If you have mm -hmm. a concern regarding uh, the safety of the child, there's a different 
record that you need to call. Yes, there is. This is zoning, health issues, you know. Yes. I get that. Yes. All right. Um, or so. We're still working. As the, as the wheel turns very slowly. A wheel, uh, we, uh, I mean, it's not like years ago where you can go just burn them out and say, get out. I'm just going to mention this for the camera because I, I want to make sure that nobody takes what I said out of context before. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, I know he's agreed to carry a phone and you're going to get Yeah, phone. if we can get counsel but, to approve you know, the money. Um, I, my personal thing, I, I was never wanting you to publish that phone number because I don't want anybody to sidestep you and be calling him. Okay. Um, it was more just for the for installers. Him. Yes, yes. And I'm just saying that because yeah. I want the public to know that that was the purpose of that and it's not for right. them to be blowing him the up personal on a regular line. basis. Yes. Perfect. Thank I mean, you. you. agree? Yes. Okay. No, and he would agree too. But I don't, I get what you, and or from the last meeting when you said, you know, like if there's an urgent situation that those people are paid a lot of money at the time and if it's something that needs to be addressed urgently. Um, he understands that and you know I think we're in, all in agreement with that's probably a good reason to have the cell phone so yeah um, council meets in two weeks so as long as they approve that for my this budget then I gotta go back in January get it approved for my 2022 budget um, <clears throat> I think we we're should. talking about burner phone yeah. yes yeah so yes something just like a track phone from Walmart yeah. or whatever. but I just I just didn't want anybody to take that out of yeah. context what I said in that last meeting yeah. because it's not a public use phone mm -hmm. for everybody to call they need to go yeah. through michelle yeah well and, and just just our main number because office. we do right. um, the state requests an annual report from all health departments and one of the questions that they ask in the annual report is how many complaints have you gotten on this and this and this for a lot of environmental issues so um i think we're all trying to get away from like the the post -it system and really try to keep track of how many complaints and things like that that we get on things so yes the main number is the best number for good. complaints Anything else? No, I'm good. You guys are good. Wow. Let me revert real quick here. Uh, I want to, no, nothing to do with you. Okay. We're done. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I want to make sure. Thank you. Uh, did Nick gave us two weeks. Do you remember what was his start date? I don't know. I'll get all of them. I thought he had two weeks on his application, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to lie to you if I told you that I knew what it was. Just curious. Well, probably not to know that. And then you can just have Nick call us at the department to figure out if I'm going to put his estate. Okay. Preferably just not going to get COVID vaccine day. All right, we'll do. All right, and I guess I uh, see the next two things on here, shop of the cop fund ordinance and the Walgreen account. I guess uh, during our last meeting, we didn't we didn't uh, approve that during the debacle of the, the meeting that it was. Uh, so I guess I'm going to entertain a motion to... Uh, Pass the ordinance for the sheriff's department for the shop with a cop fund ordinance uh, hashtag 2021-024. I think we approved the the program, the program itself at the meeting. This is for an, this is to fund. establish a fund yeah. Yeah, to place. We're establishing a fund for them to place the money in, like we did with the baby box for EMS. So I'll entertain a motion. Uh, who will be over the phone and responsible yeah, we'll, for the fund? The the it'll go to the sheriff's department, but the, it'll be an auditor. Uh, it'll be in the auditor's office ledger. Okay. It'll be a line item. Right. I, guess All right. Right. I will make the motion to pass Shop of the Cop Fund Ordinance 2021-024 from Walgreens County. No, that's oh, two different no, Okay, well, I, I make the motion to pass the fund ordinance. John makes a motion to pass the yeah, shop of the yeah. cop ordinance, and this yeah. this actually we've already, as the attorney already uh, said, we've already passed the ordinance for the shop of the cop. It, this is creating a line item in his budget well, line. Well, we, we passed the we approved the agreement. Yes, we approved the sheriff's authority. To this is an create the program. Yeah. yeah, this is just an operational. Yeah. This is to give him a this, fund to yeah. deposit the money into, which yeah. will be, they'll track and we'll track. It's a, yeah. it puts it in the auditor's 
Do I make the motion? I'll second. Randy seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. Now, the second thing was the Walgreens account authorization for him to. It's, I think it's like a credit card thing where he he can I, get his. Uh, it's, okay. a, it's a signature on a contract. The, the, there's a contract. There's a contract. Here's the original. Yeah. yeah. I I thought that the, that's right. This was just to open an account so he right. can have terms like pay in 30 days. Or, I thought we was yeah. going to look into. Uh, uh, other places and see if we could get a discounted rate before we signed the contract. Actually, I, that was me asking the state of Indiana if they had a a uh, a state rate for prescriptions. I haven't yet to get a response uh, from the lady I sent it to. That has nothing to do with that technically. That's a that can come and yeah, go. Yeah, this doesn't set. Doesn't this doesn't set. This doesn't set amounts. It it says if you. I mean, I don't have the contract. And this, and this isn't the pharmacy or record either. Yeah. This does not make does not make them exclusive. If you can find something cheaper and using somebody else. Yeah, he, it doesn't lock him into anything. It's, it's, it's probably going to be the primary account this goes closest. Uh, yeah, there's no, but that don't mean it has like, There's no specific pricing even in, in this. It's, uh, who who it's if you buy it, you will pay for it. Yeah, I guess what, I, I was thinking maybe you know, it would be a bargaining ship if we... No, they don't do that. Before we sign, it would be a bargaining ship. I will ask, you're the medical expert here. Uh, what, even with that rate there, mm -hmm. if you call like good RX, and mm -hmm. would is that even discounted from that? The only thing that you're gonna do to get cheaper medication is if you do what DOC does, which is do, um, it's like the fancy brand name medications, and this is like all medication, like blood pressure and things like that. Um, the fancy brand name is usually a couple different medications combined into one pill, so it makes it convenient for the patient to take one pill every day instead of like four or five, right? So the only way you're going to get a cheaper rate is do what DOC does, and that's like several pills at the generic brand, give it to the patient. But that is going to be decided by the physician that orders that medication, which I think um, Sheriff Griffin said is going to be advanced starting at the beginning of the year since IU Health can't come back uh, or is not coming back. Um, Wouldn't, so, isn't Advance doing it now? No, IU Health is their infectious disease, so they order I know, but it. I understand they order, but doesn't the, the nurse over there give out the prescription? Right, but she's a nurse, so she doesn't write the prescription. Yeah, I get that. I get so that. the only way you can get a change in the prescription, which is the physical medication, is whatever the doctor writes for. So if that doctor doesn't want to write for the generic, two pill or three pill regimen instead of just the one brand name pill, then they're kind of at whatever the doctor wants to do. Um, so the doctor that will be doing that in the future will be the doctor from Advanced Medical? That's my understanding of talking to the sheriff and talking to um, Well, I've, the we've had a conference, we had a conference call with, with Advanced Medical too. And so uh, I guess- I mean, um, You may get like a hundred dollars here and there. I think, you know, if you like go to CVS versus Walgreens, but it's probably all about the same with the brand name medications. So I guess my question, uh, you said DOC, but, and that's where I was asking the question in Indianapolis is, is there a state, just like you buy a car, there's a state rate for cars. I mean, is there a state rate for prescriptions? Because I'm sure the Department of Corrections isn't going to Walgreens and going, hey, they charge probably, me what you charge Joe Blow coming in off the street. They probably have contracted with X pharmacy or whoever and said, we're going to guarantee you, we're going to give you 10,000 prescriptions a year because you're going to do all of our Department of Corrections through the state of Indiana. And so for that, we'll give you a discounted rate of this. Um, that's probably my assumption of what's happening. I don't know, but I do know that they do do the generic medications and they don't do the name brand, which saves them a little bit of money at DOC. Just okay. like with that great. Right. But again, your doctor would have to be comfortable writing that script um, for those medications and not the name brand, which I'm, I'm not sure all doctors are comfortable with that, especially if they're not an infectious disease doctor. And if they or some doctors just don't want just don't like that. They would rather just do the name brand, you know how that goes. Alright. So I guess back to the Walgreen account authorization. Do I enter? 
entertain a motion to accept that. I'll make a motion. Right. Sean makes a motion. I'll second. Brady seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. I think this is the. Probably something he needs to nail down. I'll, uh, and I, I'll reach it back out to my contact and see if she got an, a message or not. down to the guy that's going to talk the most, the attorney <laughs> comments. I have nothing. What I like about him. I, I will say I, I apologize <laughs> for being late. Uh, yeah. This morning I was coming from court. We're doctor types. <laughs> anyway. John, you got hey. anything? No. Brandy, you got anything extra? <laughs> Tammy, you got anything? Have a good conference. Enjoy your Oh, time. yeah. Learn a lot. You guys learn a lot. Me too. I am going to, uh, I am going to ask, I, I am going to say something here. I'm going to ask uh, Baker Tilly, uh, what did he say? I can't think of the guy. Jason. I am going to chase him down when I get up there um, and ask him some questions about the ARP money. So, um, but. And then that, that is another thing that I want you guys, maybe December, early January, December gets really, really busy. But I think one of the goals for early 2022, it's hard to say that, isn't it? Um, is um, going to be to have an ARC meeting and kind of set lay your tracks a little bit to where you can look at the plans that I've been collecting and start focusing on a few of them and maybe we can nail some of those down and give out some money. So that's, that's, I'd, I'd like to do that thought. too, but uh, let me, bring up one thing while we're still here. Um, end of the year meeting, when do you want to do that? December the 15th, I think, is your next one. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, let me look at my calendar here. Well, we, typically, we have a push-out meeting, last of the year, kind of wrap things up, do odds and inclines. Pay the bills. Yes. Um, Christmas break is actually... Christmas is on a Saturday. Yes. So we're off on the 24th and the 27th. 23rd. Oh, 23rd and 24th. Okay, thank you, Michelle. 23rd and 24th. And then that next week, we've, all, we've got a full week, basically, except for Friday, because that's New Year's Day holiday for us. So that last week, if you guys look at that, 27th through the 30th, day, evening, whatever you want to do, we can, we can maybe, that we can, that works out really good having four full days that last week of the year. So I'm on my winter schedule, so whatever works for everybody else. Okay. I'm so, good for, I think, any day then. Okay. So maybe the 15th, we'll, we'll set that last meeting of the year. Right, we'll just think about it. Okay. That sounds right. good. I don't have anything else, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. John makes a motion. Randy seconds. I'll make that unanimous. Safe travels, you guys. Yep, this is the first meeting I've been in.